Do you know this man? I have 11 bracelets. Are you familiar with his work? The best-selling book. Does his face look familiar? 12 million beer cans. Ooh, baby. When it comes to poker, Phil Helmuth is number one in everything except modesty. I'm the best in the world by far at home. He talks a good game, and he plays one too. I believe that. But it's been almost 20 years since the poker brat won the main event. Helmut wins the championship. And he hasn't advanced this far since 2003. I think that a new nickname will emerge for me. Poker King. Could this be the year that Helmuth redefines his legacy by winning the big one a second time? Let's shuffle up and deal. Welcome to the World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light with Dorman Chad. I'm Lon McCarran. It's day four of the main event, and for the first time at the start of the day, the Rio Poker Room is not full. From a starting field of 68-44, less than 500 players remain, some of whom are looking to continue their momentum. Hard work done. Now you got to catch cards. And others who are hoping to claw their way back amongst the leaders. We're doing it today, boys. We're coming back today. The comeback starts today. Let's go. Everyone left has earned at least $27,000, but they all have their eyes on the first place prize of more than $9 million. Sometimes he's a poker brat. Sometimes he's a poker king. At all times, he's unmistakably Phil Helmuth. And his next door neighbor today at the table is the equally talkative Jean Robert Balland, a.k.a. Bobby of Survivor China fame. The blinds will start at 2,500 and 5,000. 500 chip ante from each player. Let me see those glasses. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. His glasses have my signature in the... Uh... Yeah, I believe it. it. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Why would you wear those today? Come on, man. I just ate, bro. Come on. Phil, no, 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 stop. They have my signature in the lens. Did you know yes. you were at the I'm short-stacked. No, no. I'm having a rough day already. Don't. No, he attended my... He came up to me yesterday. He said... Yeah. Actually, Adam Kennedy attended Phil's poker camp and apparently came back with a souvenir. Now, the Milwaukee's best light pocket cam, Phil looks down at Queen Jack, off suit. Helmuth has so many records at the World Series, including now most signature sunglasses at the feature table. Phil calls. There's Adam Levy, known online as Ruthless. That is Sarkis Akopian from Moscow. King Jack, offsuit. Akopian graduated from a technology college in Armenia. Uh, I believe they are the Demon Deacons. <laughs> Balan now in the big blind, 5-4. Everybody would think that you would be raising my big blind. Instead, you protected my big blind. I love it. Well, I limped, I in, with, I limped in with ace queen on the TV table last time, and the guy had 10-4. It came 10-4 ace. Ooh, how did that work out? It didn't work out well for me. Phil never forgets. So we've got three limpers. The flop is seven. Jack 10, Akopian, and Helmuth pair their Jack. Akopian's king kicker with the lead. That's how you check, Lon. Yeah. <laughs> Help me bet that's 11,000. Man, that's how you bet 11,000 with the second best hand. Okopian Raise. raises. Man, that's how you raise with the best hand. Everybody playing perfect poker. Yep, yep, yep. Raise to 25,000. Milan 25, gets out of the way. Help me calls. My man is in trouble. So heads up to the flop. Okopian with the advantage. Ace. Both now with straight draws. Each needs the other's kicker to make a straight. Help me checks. Scare card for both. River card, three of spades. Okopian, with that better kicker, earns the check mark. Now, well, it's a blank on the river. Helmuth figures his jacks are good. 8,000 into a pot of 72,000. And a call. Jacks. Jacks with a weaker kicker. Okopian, jacks with a better kicker. And through his signature shades, Phil can see he is out kicked. And Phil has no cause for complaint either. Come on. <laughs> That's what I get for playing that hand. You're right. <laughs> Should have muffed the clean deck. Phil tried to set the tone, but he got bit there. Norman, just in case you missed his press releases, Phil Helmuth owns the career record for most caches with 68. Most final tables with 40, and of course, most bracelets with 11. He certainly is the most decorated player remaining, and he may be the man to beat. He may be the man to beat, and he may be his own worst enemy. Phil Helmuth has a remarkable talent to play great poker and to tick people off. Yeah, he can dodge bullets, baby, but throughout the main event, he also has to outlast all those dying to send the poker brat packing. It's Phil against the world, and it's fun to watch. 
The antithesis of the brashness of Phil is the relative tranquility of Allen. Five-time bracelet winner Allen Cunningham, that is, at table two. He's got pocket queens in a hand right now with Shane Pacheco, who has pocket jacks before the flop. And now here is the flop. It is deuce, deuce, five. Cunningham with queens up has the lead. Cunningham with four caches at the World Series this year, all top 30 finishes. Pacheco with jacks up. That's 25,000. Both players with different techniques in covering their mouth. 25,000 is the call from Alan Cunningham. Turn card now. It is a tray. Big advantage for Cunningham with one card to go. See the percentages, Alan, a 19 to 1 favorite. Pacheco checks this time. Cunningham covers his mouth with his right hand and bets with his left. That is the Sicilian technique. Cunningham bets 50,000 with that left hand. Pacheco covers his mouth with his left hand and bets with his right. That is the Bavarian technique. See the difference? Very clearly. Bavarians also are very patient. He does make the call, though. One card to come. River card is an eight. Cunningham has the check mark. Of course, with either technique, it is difficult to talk. Pacheco checks with his right hand. 100,000. Oh, he did speak. Th that's more of a suburban Sicilian style. <laughs> 100,000 from Alan Cunningham. Oh, oh, and this guy's got a beard. This guy's got a beard, Lon. That changes everything. <laughs> Pacheco with jacks up. Second best to Cunningham. I call. He calls. And he will give those chips away to the five-time bracelet winner. And Pacheco shows his losing hand. So Pacheco, bad luck with those pocket jacks to run into a bigger pocket pair. By the way, when Allen said 100,000, those were the first words he'd spoken since Easter. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the E-Trade financial chip count. We see some of the notable players in the field with that pot. Allen Cunningham, well over the chip average with nearly 500,000. Got a lot of work to do to catch the chip leaders in the room. Jeremiah Smith and Jeremy Joseph, whom you see here, the only men over a million chips. Joseph, a 23-year-old looking for his first bracelet. I would call him loose aggressive, and it has accumulated him a lot of chips. So Joseph is top dog right now. There is Jeremiah Smith, second in chips. Last year at this time, Jeremiah was reporting on the main event. This time, the bloggers are reporting on his chip stack. My second coin flip. And what a chip stack it is. You know, the former blogger and pastor has been preaching to the table, and when you've got chips, people got to listen. <laughs> all in the call, blue 28. Day three chip leader Brian Shadlick is all in with his ace high against queen seven of Darren Grant. Shadlick started day three with 800,000 in chips. I'd like to stick around for a while if I can. He started today with 22,000. He is looking for an ace to secure this hand. Now the flop. Okay. Right. Yeah, he's still right. good for that flop. Shadlick's still a three to one favorite. Turn card now. Oh, is a queen, and Grant puts Shadlick on the brink of elimination. Yeah, now Shadlick, the, the special ed teacher from Ohio, can only stick around if he gets an ace on the river. Brian was the talk of the town here for a while. Now the river card. It's a 10, and he is done. That's how quickly things change at the main event. That was a tough card to take. Tough card. I'll be back next year. It was a lot of fun. Good luck, guys. Hmm. Is he bluffing? Could be German ship. I don't trust Germans. <laughs> Two cards could mean anything. Let's raise the stakes, frighten them off. No one to play with. Darn. So play online at partypoker.com. It's fun. It's easy. It's the world's largest poker room. All right. All right. Okay. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light, Main Event. Back inside the Rio for day four of the main event. Phil Helmuth at our featured table, but as usual, having a hard time sitting still. Yes. <laughs> Bracelet number 11. It's been living in New York for a long time. Uh, maybe it needed some emotional distance from Phil. My sister Molly. I won bracelet number 11 on 6-11. And she was born 11-11. A lot of 11s. And poker casinos are open 
Oh, come, come on. As our 7 yeah. Yeah. Come on now. Start your own string, son. <laughs> Phil has never shied away from tooting his own horn, but in this tournament, he seems to be playing with even more confidence than usual. I don't care if there's 300,000 players in it. I've always felt like I'm going to win the main event once, maybe twice more in my life. Well, I feel pretty good. I mean, I'm, I'm, I seem to be at the peak of my powers. Yes! Yes! And I'm capable of never being all in and making it all the way to the final table. That deserves a celebration. Come on now. I know what I'm doing. I know how to win. My biggest bet of the tournament. I've won more Hold'em tournaments than anybody in history by far. You want the truth? And when I start reading people well, then I can be a very scary player to contend with, and they all know that. <laughs> so this is imaginable. This stuff can happen. I've beat 2,700 player fields. Now we're down to 470. You guys want to play some poker with me? Let's go, baby. If you had to bet your money, you have to bet on me. At this point, I put my money on Phil. He simply doesn't make many mistakes. All right, let's head back out into the field and check on another famous mouth that is always running, that of Mike Madison. What do you think, buddy? Did you get there or no? Reagan Silver made a bet. You going to show me if I fold? After the river. You know, touching a player at the table is a little inappropriate, and I'm quite certain you're not supposed to take the player's pulse while you're in a hand. James, help me here, man. I got to do good in this tournament. I don't want, you have a lot of chips. You just want a big pot. Time, please. Silver, not wanting to play ball with Mike. Well, I wouldn't have called a clock. I would have called a bouncer. Clock on 35. Are you nervous? Mikey folds. Silver will take the pot. But hoping he's never touched again by Mattiso. That was the toughest decision I made all tournament. Still Hope it was the right one. The mouth of Habad Khan has been mute during the 2008 main event, despite being the last man from the 07 final table still alive in this tournament. He's facing a big bet from his opponent. Habad's been so quiet, I, I believe aliens snatched his body and, and put the soul of Marcel Marceau in him. <laughs> Havad does lay down his hand to that big bet. Havad started the day with 338,000 chips. Picking up some of the slack in the chatter department is pro Michael Carroll. He was seated with Jerry Yang on day one and Phil Locke on day two, but he says he's hoping to perform well enough that the big names will say they were seated with him. Michael in his Kobe Bryant jersey for this entire main event. Never be ashamed to fold. See the keys, take those glasses, and toss them. Amen, Michael. You can see. I'm going to get this whole table and make we going shopping. <laughs> you guys got a lot of stuff going on that's caught, affecting your game. You got to get rid of that before we go to the final table. We're going to take this whole table to the final table. We're going to go shopping. And Jason Young's in trouble all in and behind the former New York Parks Department worker who won a bracelet this year has pocket sixes against the pocket eights of Jeremy Renz. Maybe I shouldn't have had him take off the Yankees jersey. Young looking for help on the river but doesn't get right. it. Renz hits a set and guys. Young is gone. Good, good job. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck, man. Good luck. He's still my guy. Good luck. Jason, I'll leave a light on for you and bring beer. What a great World Series premiere for Jason Young. Now back to our featured table. A couple of big personalities, a couple of big men sitting next to each other, Helmuth and Balant. There is Russia's Sarkis Akopian, 10-9 offsuit. Nice. And nobody raised yet. Another raise from the Russian player. Makes it 16,000. Action folds over to Balant. Balant with ace-queen offsuit. In a small blind. I'm going to raise. Jean Robert had a 9-1 to chip lead. Heads up looking for his first bracelet just before the main event. But Matthew Graham beat him. I play all my chips. And yeah. Ballon is going to move all in with ace-queen. Big blind Phil Helmy folds. So back to a copia now. He'll need just over 66,000 to call. Yeah, blue. Get it. Cool. And a call from a copian quickly. Motley 10-9 will call him. Wow. I'm left. Oh, God. <laughs> Did I not raise it up? No. I win. Well, I did. Huh? I win, win. I do need a double up, but I, man, I don't even understand. We talk a lot about the landmines the pros have to dodge at the main event. Here is one. I love the call, but 
I'm not very lucky in these kind of situations. Oh, man. Bill, what's going on here? Don't send me home with the 10-9. Please don't send me home with the 10 Don't get Phil started on this type of situation. Mathematically, I don't know if that was a correct call. Mathematically, it's not an awful call. I knew you were strong, John. Of course I was strong, but strong or not, 10-9? All right, 10-9 against Ballon's ace-queen, and there's an ace. Yes. John Robert loves the call now. Come on. No jacks, please. No jacks and no sevens. No jacks, no sevens, and I don't need any more pairs. No jacks, no sevens, and he doesn't need any more pairs. <laughs> Deuce ball. It's a six. That's the court I'm talking about. Not over yet, John Robert. Did I tell you that you look very handsome today, so sir? John Robert, he can still hit a seven. A cope in with a straight draw. <laughs> Ballon thought it was over. <laughs> Almost, John Robert. John Robert, ladies and gentlemen. Bye-bye. <laughs> uh, Copian thinks he's going to hit the four-outer. Don't do it to me like that. That would be ugly. Uh, Copian needs a seven for a straight to knock out Jean Robert. River card. Oh! It's a seven. <laughs> Ballon is gone. Thank goodness oh it wasn't God. Phil. Oh, God. He came back oh, from China for oh, this? God. Me. He does make his first oh, made of in cash, but he's not oh. happy about that right now. That was the so sickest, rich. dude. No. Maybe we'll bring Jean Robert back for oh. main event All-Stars. <laughs> what a way to go out. That was the John sickest Robert thing Ballon ever. survived the many slings and arrows of the first few days of the main event, but he could not survive 10-9 off suit. This poker fact brought to you by FullTiltPoker.net. If you play a hand without a pocket pair, tread lightly. There's just a one in three chance you'll catch one on the flop. Back inside the Rio with a featured table is still a buzz over that bad beat that knocked Jean Robert Ballon out of the main event. That was the Robert hand. I'm still thinking of it. You're right. That was just cold. He thought he'd won. He's jumping up and down. Yeah. He thought it was over. The fact that he has to sweat it pre-flop against 10-9, you know, like expecting... You know. That's ace-eight. It's over. Yeah, that would have been a bad beat any time. Even more dramatic when it happens at this stage of the main event. Tommy looks down at a queen of spades and squeezes out a three of hearts. Helmuth and Johnny Chan, the only main event champion still alive in this field. And it looks like Helmuth decides to get frisky with Queen 3 offsuit. Yeah, he raises to 16,000 on Andy Schultz now, 23 years old, born in Madison, Wisconsin, same as Phil. And like Phil, he also went to the University of Wisconsin, Madison. Schultz with Ace Queen offsuit. Phil won the main event at age 24. So maybe Schultz has designs on it at uh, age 23. He's going to re raise to 44,000. This is what I do. I bust people. You usually don't bust them with Queen Trey. <laughs> Rest the table now, considering the action between the two Wisconsin players. Action back to Phil now. Wow, I've raised three pots. Honey, I raised three pots. They came over the top of me twice. He may be talking to his wife, but I'd like to think he's talking to me. They don't respect my bets. It's a classic setup for me, baby. This guy. This freaking guy. Phil folded. <laughs> Just watch, baby. You see it every day, though, so you know. I know, Putin. Hey, at least you're still dodging bullets. You're going to need to put your chip to the left or right. Or left. Every, once they start raising me, so they have no respect for my raises. That's when they just give me all their chips. Tell them, honey. It uh, happens every day. It's amazing. Every day. Two out of three times they came over the top. Ooh, they think they can mess with me. Ooh. <laughs> Let me just show them who I am. He did fold, right? Uh, yes, he did, but he still finds uh, some way to take center stage. So the younger Wisconsin Badger wins that duel. Out in the field, the youngins are following suit. At one of the outer tables, we find 24-year-old Aussie Mark Foss. He owns one bracelet, sitting with an above-average stack right now. Foss was 22 when he won a bracelet in 06. He went to college for a while. Now he just sort of wanders the world. Uh, you guys don't take it seriously. Foss doing well at the outer tables. I love it when they wave to me. Elsewhere, standing up in the middle with his hat backwards, Brandon Cantu was just 25 when he won his bracelet a couple of years ago, and he knocks off a player there. 
perfect. Cantu is a bit more mature than he was a couple of years ago, Lon, but he's still a bit of a madman on the felt. From madman to funny man, Adam Schoenfeld enjoying his first cash in any World Series event. He is looking to double up against Sigurd Eskelin, one of the day three chip leaders. If I vomit, does that involve a penalty? <laughs> if I vomit, will that incur a penalty? At that time, you don't, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Yeah. Johnny Chance says you get knocked out, they can't penalize you. Schoenfeld with pocket tens against the King Jack. The flop is 6-7-8. Pocket tens lead. Adam added a gut shot straight draw. Adam trying to dodge a king or a jack. Turn cards a nine. Schoenfeld hits his straight. Schoenfeld in great shape, as you see from the percentages. That was an odd card, though. Adam now can only be knocked out if one of the two remaining tens comes on the river. It would give Eskeland a higher straight to the jack. Otherwise, Schoenfeld doubles up. Now the river card. Oh, my. It is a ten. That doesn't seem possible. Eskeland gets the better straight. Comes from way behind to knock out Adam Schoenfeld. And Johnny Chan can't believe what he sees. And I do believe we're going to need some medical help or, or some type of counseling for Adam Schoenfeld here at table 63. Good luck, guys. The poker guides gave him his first cash, but Adam has dealt a crushing knockout blow. The 2008 World Series of Poker, presented by Milwaukee's Best Light. Main event. Welcome back to the Rio at table two. Alan Cunningham just flopped a set of jacks against Frank Russo, who paired his ace with that flop. Action on Cunningham with 143,000 in the pot already. Cunningham with that set bet 70,000. Come on. Russo pushes. I call. And a call from Cunningham. And Russo all but crushed. Come on, ace. Come on, ace. You're going to need an ace and a 10. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Russo, who played baseball at the University of Miami when the Canes won the College World Series in 1984, doesn't have many outs here. It is a nine on the turn. Uh, seven or a queen. Yeah, Russo with a straight draw. So uh, Russo now can stay alive with a seven or a queen. River card is another jack. Well, quads will win the hand most times. I'm sure you got me covered, right? Yes, I do. You're like Alan Cunningham needs quad jacks. <laughs> All right, and with those quads, Frank Russo eliminated from the main event. Alan Cunningham takes you out very quietly and with class. As All-American Alan Cunningham stacks those chips, let's check on some of the players who help give the main event an international flavor. Victor Rambin having a good day when he's not tending to his New York businesses or playing poker. Victor helps provide medical assistance to needy families in Guyana, country where he was born 40 years ago. Rambin is married with two children. He came to the United States in 1989. At another table, we find David Saab. He was born in South Korea but spent most of his life in Australia, which explains why he sounds nothing like someone he's often mistaken for. <laughs> when Jerry Yang won, right, it was like the worst week of my life. Absolutely everybody rang me up and says, oh my God, did you win $10 million, Dave? Oh my God. It was so bad. I wish I were mistaken for Jerry Yang. No worries. There you go, mate. All right, at another table, back to 24-year-old Australian Mark Foss. This is his fourth cash of this World Series. He's in a hand right now with Philip Leo. Foss leads with ace-king against the ace-queen. Turn card coming out is an eight. No help to Leo. Leo's going to need a queen to stay alive. River card is a 10, and Leo has been eliminated from the main event by Mark Foss. Foss uh, was studying commerce back in college. Now he just practices it. At 24, he's already a veteran of the poker wars and using the game as a tool to achieve his master plan. I played like over 2 million hands of poker, 8 hours a day, 6 days a week for 3 years straight. I've never really been inspired by bracelets and things like that. I don't play because I want to win the tournament. I play because I want to win the money. Obviously, I'd like to win this one, but there's nothing from an ego perspective. From the fame and stuff, I'm pretty sure I'd, I'd love it for about six months, and then I'd want it to end. I don't really want to ever do a proper job, so this hopefully is a way to never have to. I'm playing poker to set myself up for my life financially. 285,700. So I'm free to do whatever I want. 
Foss finished 457th at the 06 main event. He's going to do better this year. We have less than 308 players left. And Norman, one of those remaining players will be rewarded with that World Series of Poker main event bracelet on our broadcast November 11th. All right, action continues here at this feature table. Phil Helmuth on the Milwaukee's Best Light Pocket Cam. At a jack and a four off suit. Mark Foss plays for money. Phil Helmuth plays for bracelets. He's got 11 of them plus six runner-up finishes at World Series events. Phil raises it to 16000 on Adam Zen, a 33-year-old sports betting consultant here in Las Vegas. King 10. All right, I'm all in. And the short stack moves all in for his remaining 26000 You don't even have to look, dude. You have to call. I know. It's nothing. I know. Enough for you to triple me up. Ruthless Adam Levy. He said he wanted to quadruple it before. Oh, come on, give me at least three people in this pot. Nine eight of diamonds. Then trying oh, to drum I up know. business. <laughs> Levy folds. Boy, oh boy, I just don't want to have to show how ugly this hand is. <laughs> it is ugly, but he's got to call 10,000 more He complains about not getting respect, and now we're going to see this. It ain't, it ain't that good. Oh, no. <laughs> Phil's raised a couple of times with nothing. Thank you, Phil. Appreciate that quick double up. Jackson Force, Jackson Force, Jackson. Tens and Kings, you're saying? Say that again. Tens and Kings? Think about it. Or just win this pot with Jack. Jack for Tens and Kings? So Zen trying to double up. Oh, and he's in good shape as he pairs his king. He's got running diamonds. He ain't got nothing because here comes the three of spade. Phil on the losing end here, but in a good mood. <laughs> All right, how about an eight of spade? That'll work. All right, I'll sweat a little. Give me a three of spade. Yeah, I had eight, nine of diamonds. Oh, there's a little sweat. That six gives Phil a straight draw. So how does now can fill that straight with a river three and knock Zinn out? Ten of spade. River card. <laughs> Oh, yeah. it's the ten of spades, and Kings Up will win the hand for Zinn. Somehow he worked that double up through Phil without incurring his wrath. How can that not be our planner's good instinct moment? And good prognosticating, he called the ten of spades. Well, I'm glad I didn't have Ace King. That would have been ugly. <laughs> ten on the river. Not like it hurt, Phil. No, oh, nice hand. Zinn doubles up, and the poker brat is unusually gracious in defeat. <laughs> Planters Good Instinct Moment is brought to you by Planters. Instinctively good. Welcome back inside the Rio Poker Room. Two former world champs play on. Phil Helmuth, of course, at the feature table. There's Johnny Chan. Chan is seated at the same table as the chip leader, Jeremy Joseph. And on Joseph's left is Kenneth Lee, who just pushed all in. Action now is on the room's chip leader. And Joseph will make the call. And Lee will be at risk. He turns over pocket sevens. Joseph with queen ten. It's a race situation, and the way Joseph's been running, Kenneth Lee is all but out of here. Flop, deuce, four, five. Lee way ahead. Turn card now. Is a ten, and that puts a dagger in Lee's hopes. Joseph's been on fire here at the main event. Lee now is going to have to have a seven to stay alive. All right, now the river card. It is a six of diamonds, and Kenneth Lee eliminated in 378th position. Jeremy Joseph gets that much richer. Joseph's running so hot, Lon, he should just stare down Johnny Chan right now. Go ahead. <laughs> Over to table two now. Alan Cunningham with yet another big pocket pair, this time Kings. He called Trevor Reardon's all-in, who's holding pocket nines. The flop did not help Reardon, and the turn does not either. Cunningham is just mowing through table two. Reardon needs a nine or his main event is over. River card is an eight. His main event is over. And Alan Cunningham continues to have a terrific day four. Alan's got chips. Another run to a main event final table could be beckoning for Cunningham. Well, I guess I could say nice hand again. Yep. Really? He hit quads already, trips, you know, kings, queens. I haven't seen the aces come out yet, so. Yeah. Garth Paul ribbing Allen for his good fortune. I can't keep catching queens and kings and jacks. 
You should try it sometime. By the way, Alan can win with all sorts of cards. Meanwhile, back at Johnny Chan's table, Chan trying to make a small pair work for him. He's got pocket fives and called Damian Carrere's all in. Carrere with ace ten. Carrere part of that amazing University of Waterloo poker factory in Canada. All oh, right, I see a riff spot. Yeah, Johnny got a set of fives. Carrere, though, paired his ace, but more importantly, picked up a flush draw. Chan, though, still positioned here to knock out Carrere. Turn card now is a diamond, and Carrere hits his flush. And Carrere now a 4-1 to one favorite to stick around. Johnny Chan can still knock him out if the board pairs. Three across. Anything. Three across. River card Three across. is a jack of diamonds, a flush on the board, but Carrere's pocket 10 of diamonds makes him the winner, and he doubles up through Chan. So Chan, who cashed in the main event this year for the first time since 1992, takes a pretty good hit right there. Yeah, Johnny started the day with 252,000, gave up almost 90,000 to Carrere there. Back to our feature table, Phil Helmuth. Helmuth looks down at an eight. He has pocket eights. Oh, no, I'm, I'm going to do something here. This hand didn't, wasn't very good for me yesterday, though. Let's think positive thoughts, my poker king. Raised to 15,000. Maybe today. Today's a different day. Today, like yesterday, Phil's face is on 12 million beer cans. On to Adam Levy, Queen 10. He is a very powerful online player. People from all around the world log on to watch the guy they call Ruthless Play. He skipped last year's World Series so he could be a camp counselor in Georgia. The flop with these guys' heads up, 9-6 jack. A pair of baits are still best for Helmuth. Levy with an up-and-down straight draw. Not the best flop for Phil to see, but he bets it. 20,000. Levy with the draw. Yeah, why wouldn't he stick around with that straight draw? A call. All right, so now the turn card. Turns an eight of diamonds. Levy hits a straight, and that also gives Helmuth a set. Well, that is an unfortunate card for Phil. Phil checks. Phil slow playing it, not realizing how much trouble he's in. Levy will not slow play his straight. That's 37,000. And Phil with a quick call. A deuce on the river. Levy earns the check mark. He's got the straight. It's a blank on the river, and Helmut's got to like his hand. Uh, unfortunately for Phil, Adam Levy's got the nuts. 60. 60,000 60, from Phil Helmuth. Phil value bets it. Yeah, the Queen 10 straight is just almost disguised with that board. I'm not tricky enough to play Queen 10 this good, am I? Levy's the one with the Queen 10. <laughs> raise. Levy announces raise up to 155,000. Now that raise freezes Phil momentarily. Let's see if he comes back over the top with his set. Phil just with a call. Queen, queen 10. Yeah, Levy with a queen 10 and the win. Called a race with a f ten of claw. He called a race with queen 10, honey. I know, honey. He's some online guy. I had a set. He's supposed to bust me anyway. Called a race with a queen 10. Turn up I think he's from Florida or someplace stupid. Called a <laughs> race with queen 10. Idiot player. Actually, he doesn't look like an idiot player, and I don't think he did anything wrong that hand. This was bound to happen sooner or later. He called a race with Queen 10. How do these players, how are they even still in this tournament? They let him in every day. And I have a set. I know you had a set, Puddin. It's just unbelievable. This kid probably won't last another hour. Half hour tops. I promise. Watch. He called a race with a queen and a ten. A queen and a ten. How do these players even last this long? Don't know. I mean, it's just so sick. They have no concept of None. poker. It was an aggressive mm -hmm. call. Aggressive call? <laughs> Idiot. Frickin' gave me a freaking... Nice deal in there. Mighty fine, buddy. Mighty fine. You know, I haven't won a pot one time. They've been just raising me and re-raising me all day. Actually, this is a new dealer. You give me a set. I just sat down, though. <laughs> Unbelievable. I am exhausted, lot. Idiot players call races with Queen doing? 10. They don't even know how to spell poker. I mean, like, this kid has all the chips. He probably won't even make the final 200. Can you call a clock on tirades? You showed a raise with Jack 4. What do you think the guy's going to do? Not call you? Uh-oh. Well, come on. Buddy, you moved in with King 10, so please don't discuss poker with me. 
a poker brat rant for the ages. Back at the Rio, Adam Levy still getting it from Phil Hellmuth. Well, let's just see what happens in four or five hours, Tom. I'd rather just be friends. Uh, no. We're either. having good chats. <laughs> no, I think you want to give me a bunch of chips. I think you feel bad because you know you're not playing very well. And only thing bad I did was call race Queen Ten of Clubs. Other than that, I think I played the hand pretty damn well. I've got to agree with him, Honey Bunch. <laughs> All right, while well, Phil stews in his own steam, let's take a look at the E-Trade Financial Tournament ticker and the current chips in play. The black 100s are gone. The dark green 25,000 chip is now in play. All right, to one of the outer tables, we find young pro Brandon Cantu. He may pick up a lot of those new chips right now if he gets lucky. He's called the all-ins of two players, Brandon with ace-queen. Stuart Hosen holds ace-jack. Jason Newberger with the lead pre-flop with pocket eights. You know, I'm all right. It's good to see you. And a queen, I'm all right. Now the flop. It is four, five, seven. Newberger still ahead with the eights and a gut shot, too. Hosen in a lot of trouble right here. <laughs> Turn card. And that ace hits Brandon. The other two are in deep trouble. Newberger needs a six or an eight or he's gone. Hosen needs a jack or he's gone. Cantu looking for the double knockout. It's a blank on the river and Cantu does eliminate two players. Gone are Jason Newberger and Stuart Hosen. So a nice catch for Cantu who says he's playing with more focus and determination than ever before. Back in 2006, when I did win my bracelet, it kind of said that I wasn't doing much. You'll never catch me do anything. I was kind of really embarrassed. I've never read a book in my life, and I didn't like how I came across that time. Not even in high school have I ever read a book. <laughs> I kind of had to look at myself and reflect a little bit. Things have changed now. I think I've grown up and more matured these days. I'm waking up at a decent hour and really motivated and I'm just really focused on poker. When I stay focused, I completely get in the zone, completely me in the table. Low board. <laughs> when I'm in the zone that I'm in right now, it's so hard to beat me and I'm absolutely just ready to take it down. The guy gets up at 11 a.m. now to focus on poker because of us, perhaps our, our proudest accomplishment. Maya Geller's proudest accomplishment has to be her daughter Mila, born last year. All in. Right now, Mila's mom has moved all in. And no matter what happens here, she has outlasted her fiancé, the hunk himself, <laughs> Patrick Antonius. Maya going up against Alan Carter. Carter trying to knock off Maya. The river card is no help, and she is gone from the main event. Bye -bye. You don't want to go home. You don't want to go home. Patrick's not even there, Maya. I saw him at the voodoo Thank lounge. Thank you. Maya is gone, but there are still 11 women left in the main event. Now we have two beautiful women at the table, boys. Evelyn Ng has joined Tracy Wynn beside Phil Helmuth here at this featured table. It might not be so easy to beat these two. <laughs> sure you'll try. We have to try, Evelyn. Come on. I'm sure you'll love it, too. <laughs> Evelyn is a Las Vegas pro. Tracy Wynn is the girlfriend of pro John Turner, a.k.a. Pearl Jammer. Tracy looks down at Queen 10. Offsuit. She'll fold. I guess she heard Phil yelling about Queen 10 earlier. Alan Kennedy and those signature Phil Hummuth glasses. He's got Ace King offsuit. If I'd known I could have gotten a pair of those glasses, I would have attended Camp Hellmuth. Kennedy, the student, bets 20000 to the teacher, Phil Hellmuth. One King with Pocket Kings. By the way, and I'm not making this up, if you join the Phil Helmuth fan club, you can buy Phil Helmuth clothing at a discounted rate. At <laughs> a discounted rate. Helmuth just calls with those kings. By the way, if I were Alan Kennedy, I would not want to beat Phil in this pot. He's still in a mood. Flop now is Trey 7-5. That misses both. Phil's kings still lead. Kennedy first to act. That's out for 25000 I'm all in. And Phil pushes all in. Well, Phil with the right read here. And he hates pushing all his chips in, but he does. A raise to 103,000. Kennedy needs 78 more to call. Kennedy's ace-king missed the flop, but he has not folded yet. I call. Kennedy will call with a chance to knock off Phil Helmuth. Well, 
that would have been a, a pretty easy fall for Kennedy unless you're just dying to knock out Helmuth. That happens to Phil a lot. Phil now at risk, and he's not going to be happy if he gets knocked out this way. On the prowl to talk to his family. Oh, boy. I have a bad feeling. I hope we can get by this. Alan Kennedy trying to topple the poker king. Tell me no ace, please, girls. Ace, 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 ace. Let's see the turn card. All right, now the turn card. It's a five. Phil still good. Kennedy needs an ace to knock out Helmuth. It's not coming, no ace. Let's see the river card. River card. <laughs> Phil is right. And Phil doubles up. Phil's back in business, still below chip average, but he's got 263,000 of them. Kennedy took his shot at Helmuth, but Phil was able to dodge the outs, and Helmuth doubles up. I don't know how I would have handled it. I just, it just didn't seem, it just really didn't seem just if an ace would have come. It's your world, Phil, but sometimes it's unjust. So one past main event champ doubles up. The other former world champion still alive in the tournament, Johnny Chan, is also all in, but he's trailing. Chan with A7. He's hooked up once again with Damian Carrere. Carrere leads with pocket eights. Chan at the main event, first in 1987, first in 88, second in 89, and seventh in 92. The flop is bad for Chan. Carrere still ahead. Chan most likely still going to need an ace. Turn card now. Is a king. Chan down to his last shot. Chan needs an ace on the river, and he doesn't like his chances. He's packing up. And now the river card is a four, and Johnny Chan has been knocked out of this main event. A quiet exit for a great champ. So Johnny Chan is out. He's glad to have ended his main event drought, but disappointed that his stay could not have been longer here in 2008. We play for big pots, small stakes, and the chance to say, read them and weep. For the weekends, the all-nighters, and the lunch hour, we play for the legends and for the unknowns who dream of winning it all. For the bad beats and the pocket kings, we sometimes have the sense to fold. We play at FullTillPoker.com. Back inside the Rio, we've had 140 eliminations already today. At the outer table, one of the chip leaders has a chance to get even bigger. Jeremiah Smith called the all-in of Nick Ramponi. Smith leads with pocket jacks. Ramponi, king, queen of hearts. And he's at risk. And the flop. Trey, eight, jack. All oh, hearts. Ramponi with a flush. Smith, though, collected a third jack. Ramponi, a 21-year-old student at Linfield College in Oregon. Not out of the woods yet. Nobody's ever out of the woods against Smith. Seven of clubs on the turn. No help to Smith. Smith can still send Ramponi home if the board pairs. The river card now, and it does pair. A full house for Jeremiah Smith knocks off Nick Ramponi. Smith still running hot. Stay out of Jeremy Joseph's way. Stay out of Smith's way. Drama. Always the drama. Jeremiah Smith gets a little healthier at the outer tables. All right, we check around the field, and we find Victor Ramden is on the move. Seems he's been assigned a new table, and he is hustling to get back into play. And he's going to join the table of Michael Carroll, who it seems, as usual, is holding court. Now, I'm going to wear my Kobe Bryant. Chatting up all his table mates. Who's going to double me up? Who's going to double you up? I got 500,000 chips. Don't you got one, six? I'll take that. You can double me up. Hey, Victor, you almost lost these chips. I have to fight. Ah, the old bring the rest of the chips late so they don't think you're so strong trick. I guess I the two floor mates. You know why I work for this stuff? Oh, maybe the sight of all of Victor's chips is something that can finally silence Michael Carroll. All right, back to the feature table where Phil Helmuth seems to have quieted down for now, but even volcanoes bubble and boil just below the surface. Action on Evelyn Ng. Evelyn has had some success on the WPT, not as much at the World Series. Ace Queen of Hearts. She is teenage chums with Daniel Negrano. She does have seven World Series caches. Born in Toronto. Raises to 21,000. Phil Helmuth has King Jack offsuit. He's my guy, but he can't keep calling others idiots. It's wrong. Phil in the big blind makes the call. So Helmuth and Evelyn Ng will go heads up to the flop. 
Slop is Jack 610. Helmuth with a pair of jacks. Ng with a royal flush draw. You know I never fold any straight flush draw, Lon. It's not in my DNA. <laughs> Phil checks. He's got the best hand right now with the jacks, but Evelyn, the favorite to win the hand, will bet 36000 She bets two-thirds the size of the pot. Phil with the jacks does not hesitate to call. My God. Turn card now. Three of diamonds, no help to Ing. Phil checks again. How fun would it be to see a second royal flush at this main event? Against Phil? <laughs> we could charge admission. Ing bets 55,000 again on the come. Evelyn's going to semi bluff it again, and, and Phil's going to check call again. How can't I love this guy? River card now. A four of diamonds misses Evelyn. Helmuth with two jacks earns the check mark, and he checks a third time. As you mentioned, Evelyn missed everything, so it's either wave the white flag or fire a third bullet. Here comes the bullet. 80,000. Well, this time she bets just one-third of the pot. It's a bluff disguised as a value bet. So with top pair. Makes the call. Evelyn shows her hand. Phil's is a lot better. Another solid read by the poker brat slash poker king. A coy play there by Helmuth. Check, 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 and take 200000 off Evelyn Ng. Been here lots of times, Maul. Speech! Speech! Many times came back and had all the chips. More than anybody in history. Bracelets, money, and modesty. Phil Helmuth is the total package. As for the remaining players, okay. the field gets thinner with almost every hand. But several big names and big mouths are still in the hunt. I need a doctor. And there are some new faces making noise. We're going to take this whole table to the final table. Yet the most familiar face of all may just be getting started. <laughs> Who will have the last laugh? For Norman Chad, I'm Lon McCarran. See you next time from the main event of the World Series of Poker.